There were a lot of rebels in ancient Rome, but the most interesting people they fought were the leaders of other countries who were trying to take over. Not only were they Roman rebels, but they were also queens, chieftains, and brilliant generals in their own right. The Senate may have considered some of these rulers to be rebellious Romans, but in most cases, these people fought to free their people from Roman rule. Take Boudicca, a famous British queen who killed Roman invaders and caused damage to London. Then Rome had rivals, like Carthage, that also wanted to control trade. You may know Hannibal as a cannibal, but before he became a lecturer, he was a brilliant general who sent many elephants into Italy to kill Romans. Hardly a Roman rebel, but a pretty cool leader on his own. Cleopatra was the last ruler of Egypt's Ptolemaic dynasty. Her relationship with Rome was long and complicated. Her dad, Ptolemy, was kicked out of power, but Roman allies put him back in charge. When Cleo took the throne, she knew how to make Egypt the most powerful empire in the Mediterranean. She made Julius Caesar fall in love with her, or at least have sex with her, since they had a young boy together who was bouncing around. Caesar killed her brother husband and helped her keep her power. Cleo later moved to Rome to be with him, discuss peer pressure. After he died, she married his best friend, Mark Antony, who gave her three children. Octavian, Caesar's great-nephew and heir, took power in Rome. Cleopatra and Mark Antony fought against him. The conflict came to an end at the Battle of Actium on September 2, 31 BCE. After that, Octavian was in charge of Rome, he became the first emperor, Augustus. In the 3rd century BCE, Rome and Carthage, the two biggest powers in the Mediterranean basin, fought three Punic Wars. Hannibal, a brilliant general, led the soldiers of Carthage, which was in North Africa, into battle. After Rome won the First Punic War, Hannibal combined power in Carthage's nests in Iberia and went ham on Rome's Spanish towns, which started the Second Punic War. He finally beat the Roman legions in a spectacular battle at Cannae, but he had to go home when the Romans attacked Carthage itself. Scipio, a Roman general, won another big battle near Carthage. This left the Carthaginians with only their land in North Africa. Hannibal didn't want to be there, but he was sent away anyway. He stayed with the Syrians and then with the people of Pergamum in Asia Minor, where he tossed containers of snakes at his opponents. Zenobia, the Syrian queen who kicked a Roman butt, it was mostly destroyed by Isis, which was a shame, because it was also home to the great Arab queen Zenobia, who rebelled against Roman rule. When her husband was a Roman client king, Zenobia went against the Romans on her own. Two years later, the Roman emperor Aurelian stood in her way. He took over the important cities that are now Ankara and Emesa in Syria. Unfortunately, Palmyra also fell, and Aurelian caught Zenobia. She either helped him win a royal victory in Rome in 274 or died of hunger. Attila was the leader of a group of nomadic people in Eastern Europe and Asia called the Huns. He was called the Scourge of Rome because he caused so much damage to the late Roman Empire. Around the middle of the 5th century CE, people started moving west into the Roman Empire. Rome had to pay them in gold so they wouldn't attack. Every year, more money is needed to keep the people away. In the 450s, Attila broke one of his treaties and attacked and stole from Roman lands. Attila was very ambitious, he killed his brother to get the throne and went to Gaul to marry a princess from the royal family, but he was a pretty simple person. Many of his men got rich as he destroyed the lands that Rome had ruled for hundreds of years. He himself took a lot of women as his own, which led to his failure. Attila died in 453 of a bad nosebleed after a crazy wedding party night. Boudicca was a British queen who led the attack on London. Near your houses of parliament, there is a statue of the British queen, Boudicca. However, because she did not obey the Romans, Boudicca destroyed London. She was the queen of the Iceni people in southeastern Britain. She was married to King Prasutagus, who sided with the Romans when they attacked in 43 CE. When Prasutagus died, the Romans decided that Boudicca would not stay in power because Prasutagus had left his kingdom to the king and the emperor's children in his will. The Romans were interested in Iceni land. One story says that they raped Boudicca and her children, 
then took the land of Iceni noblemen and made the tribespeople work for them. In 60 and 61, Boudicca, the Iceni, and other people rose up against the Romans. Before a Roman army finally beat them, they beat the Roman 9th Legion and destroyed the old cities of Colchester, London, and St. Albans. As the Romans took back control of Britain, Boudicca may have killed herself or been killed in battle. Viriatus, the last Spaniard, he was a Spaniard who led a rebellion against the Romans, who ruled parts of Iberia in the 2nd century BCE. In 151 BCE, the people of Lusitania tried to make peace with Rome by attacking it over and over again. However, the Roman leader in the area killed the Lusitanians without mercy. A few years later, Viriatus led the long-lasting Lusitanian forces against the Romans. In one fight, he killed their leader and thousands of men. Viriatus couldn't do it forever. He made a deal with Rome, and then three of his own men turned on him and killed him. Eunice, the slave who became king, he was chained in Sicily in the 2nd century BCE, but he didn't stay down for long. With fellow slave rebel Cleon, he put together an army of 70,000 other slaves. He took the city of Enna and made himself a king named Antiochus. However, just a few years later, in 132 BCE, a Roman consul put Eunice in jail for disobeying the law. The heir of Numidia was Jugurtha. The North African prince, Jugurtha, was the son of a well-known king who did business with Rome. Jugurtha slowly but surely got rid of all of his rivals for the throne. He did this while helping the Romans fight the Carthaginians, learning Latin, and becoming best friends with senators. Eventually, though, Jugurtha killed some Italian merchants, which made the Romans fight against him around 111 BCE. Rome didn't do too well either, and the two countries made a treaty, but it didn't last long because Jugurtha killed another rival for his throne. Marius, a Roman leader who served as consul seven times and was married to Caesar's aunt, attacked Numidia and beat Jugurtha with the help of the king of nearby Mauritania. In 105 BCE, Marius took Jugurtha home and paraded him through Rome to celebrate a military victory. Not long after that, Jugurtha died. Disbalus is the national hero of Romania. Even though the names of Romania and Rome come from the same place, people from the two places didn't get along in ancient times. Meet Disbalus, who was king of the Dacians in the 1st century CE. The Dacians lived in what is now Romania. Like many of the people who fought against Rome, Disbalus brought together a lot of separate people into one force to fight against their powerful opponent. With the help of his men, Disbalus attacked the Roman province of Mesia. This angered the Parthians. He beat the Romans a few years earlier when Domitian was dictator, but now he had to deal with a new enemy, Emperor Trajan, who went to Dacia in 101 to get away from Disbalus. Disbalus tried to fix things in 102, but it didn't work out. Trajan made Disbalus a customer king, but it didn't help, generally a queen who ruled by the grace of Rome. A few years later, Trajan was fed up and attacked Disbalus again, though no one knows who started it. Disbalus ended up losing again and killing himself in 106, a year before Dacia was officially ruled by the Romans. Modern Romanians think of him as a national hero. One man even made a huge head of Disbalus so that everyone could see it. Arminius, German slaughterer of soldiers. In 9 CE, the German leader, Arminius, caused one of Rome's worst defeats ever. During the Battle of the Teutoburg Forest, the Germans beat the Romans so badly that they were able to stop the Romans from moving west and destroyed 10% of the royal forces. How did Arminius beat the Romans over the course of his career? He started by moving up in Roman society. After Teutoburg, he stood up to General Germanicus by recording his wife and another Roman attack. Arminius was killed in the year 17 CE, and it was not the Romans who did it.